a couple of cards that I made just kind of messing. Um, I use liquid watercolors often for this. Sometimes I do like will make the panel of the backgrounds and put something over the top of it. But often I save when I have some that maybe I don't like or didn't turn out like I wanted. I always save them and this is what I do with them. Um, this happens to be one I really like. It's my backup plan for today if things aren't drying fast enough. But I save them. Like this one kind of came out a lot more washed than I thought. But I thought it could make for a really pretty flower or even a sentiment dye if I needed something to add. So if you have panels that you like or don't like, hold on to them. Especially too, once everything is dry, I feel like it just looks different. So, and I do try to air dry. Oh, here's one more. See, I keep them all. They Once they're cut up, they get, it's a whole new life to them. So, um, but I did bring them as my backup plan in case things aren't drying. I get a little impatient because normally when I do liquid watercolors at home, I like to let it air dry. Um, I always spread it out, do a layer, let it dry, walk away, come back, do another layer. Um, so I don't, oh, it's not normally a sit down and finish the process because I find die cutting my watercolor paper, all of that stuff is way better if I fully let the paper dry. I will even fully let it dry splatter and let it dry. Um, I understand that that makes for kind of a process when you're stamping, but I usually set it up, I'll do it, it takes me five, 10 minutes, I walk away, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, I should go upstairs and do another layer. And so it's kind of not a sit down and finish, but you could if you wanna sit and heat dry it in between. So I'm going to mainly talk about this one. Doing this one, I'm just gonna tell you what I used. Um, the background is an oldie but goodie. It happens to be stippled, the stri or sorry, sorry, the striped background. I had a piece of press and seal. I do this. I have I my stamp room's not close to my kitchen. It's on kind of an add-on part of our house, so I keep the press and seal sheets just kind of stuck in a pile in my room. So I keep them around, and I had to bring a couple today, so I had them for the video. So anyway. Sorry, that's what that is. So the striped background, and of course the flower is from Layer at Daisies. And then the sentiment set is botanical sentiments. Um, but how I made that one, this background paper is oyster with sugar cube stamped on it with that striped background. And this, the floral, the flowers that I did, I couldn't decide it was kind of tossed, the toss up for me, I, but I do like the direction I went. I thought if I, cut the watercolor piece from this intricate die. It might be a little busy, and I'm really glad I did that. So I did the solid piece out of my watercolor panels. So this is kind of some of the tries that and errors that went along with that, but um, that was uh, lemon meringue. This one I happened to use a little pineapple in, and honestly, I wish I hadn't. Pineapple gives it more of an orange tone and lollipop, but this one was with lollipop and lemon meringue. And that's kind of what I was going for, but this was kind of some of my practice sheets to decide what color I liked. But that is how I made that one, just to kind of give you the parts and pieces that I used. We'll set that one aside for now. I do really love the way it turned out because I love the oyster with the pink. I think it's really cute. So we'll set that one aside. That's not our main focus. And then I'll talk about, I really, really love these new leaves that came out, the tropical leaves. They are so adorable. I like them a lot. I have some die cuts on top of here and we'll use these in a minute. Um, but this was, as soon as we came out with these, this kind of came up in my head that either I could use them with liquid watercolor or some alcohol ink panels. So, oh, I see Charlie, uh, sent added the link for the striped backgrounds um that is an old like it's an older one that we've had around but it's such a staple i use it often you can get subtle looks like with the sugar cube and the oyster and get a subtle background or you can get something strike striking like a black and white for a black background and it makes the best um it probably should have been used right here going this way with this is tropical punch and used 
that same color ink on it to get the tone and tone on tone look would have been really pretty down here so anyway oldie but goodie but i see charlie added that for you let me grab get a couple of things out of our way here i'm going to i'm going to show you you can do this by adding the ink or the watercolor liquid watercolor right to your die cuts i have to say that's not my favorite it's a little tedious for me but i'm going to show you how i did it so i have a couple of hard boards i keep these around my stamp room just so i can pick things up and get it out of the way um, you can of course tape your watercolor panels down to it if you're doing an entire background wash um, i won't be doing that today that i focused kind of in a different direction with this but i keep those around to just set things on like this is the i think it's charlie you might have to help me on this we sell it it's from waffle flower it's their the small mat that they make and i love it it's nice and easy for cleanup if you happen to have the old ranger i remember what these were called back in the day they came in a big roll i cut mine down this works too but you need one of those because you need a surface that's not going to soak in all of your liquid watercolor so i'm going to show you doing it with your die cuts first and then I'll, the second way i do it is actually more my favorite so let's get started i have here these die cuts are cut with the one 118 pound watercolor cardstock that te sells and i just took them all and i die cut them out um just didn't want to bore you with that on tv so i pre-did them so and then this part doesn't change between both of them but I have Peapod and then Blue Raspberry and I do like to add just a little bit of the Lime Zest. Uh, first few times I was just using, when I first just was trying to see what colors I like together, uh, the Mini Media Matte, thank you, and Taylor did link it. Um, this kind of has some yellow tones in it, the Lime Zest, so I had to add the Peapod if I wanted to bring my green back in. but. Uh, I used, like if I did 50% this, 50% these, because I needed the mix of the two greens. So um, I just take my watercolor and I make just a mess on my mat, really. I was telling Taylor, I'm like, I um, feel like when I do this, it's just more having fun. <laughs> it's, I don't have many rules to this, and maybe that's why I don't do it a ton, is just because it just doesn't have a ton of rules. Every, every time it turns out differently. That's why probably I have that whole pile of pieces, but there's always parts of them that turn out. I always want to be in control and there is no control when it comes to this. So kind of got to go with the flow. So then I have the Nouveau Light Mist. This thing is super wonderful. And you just want to spray your mat till you start seeing beads on everything. So you want to see it move, but you do not want to see it just running around. So let me give it a few more spritzes there. So I can see that things are starting to move. And then if I take a piece, I always try to use tweezers. You will see me, I eventually get my fingers in there and I will get them dirty. Um, I had green nails yesterday from trying and messing around. But you will just take your die cut right in there and then I like to pick them up, kind of peek at them, tap it back down, and then I will set that aside on my, I'll bring it in when I'm all done, but I will set that over there on that hard board. Uh, whatever you have, if you have a paper plate or a uh, whatever, just something to get it out of the way, but not on my desk making a mess. That one has quite a bit of green in it, so I'm gonna come over here where I can see a little bit of blue, add that. Um, so this is one way to do it, but then it's a, it is a little bit tedious because a lot of times I want a couple of layers. I don't think I'm pressing that hard, but I see I'm making the camera move. Oh, this one's turning out really pretty. I love all the colors. And sometimes it's also fun to be able to kind of run it around a little bit. When it's in the die cuts like this, you can kind of make things go where you want it to. So that is the advantage of using just the die cuts but see i already have it on my fingers i have a baby wipe off to the side 
just for such occasions. Pretty mix of colors. I have used, ever since I got my TE liquid watercolors, this is my favorite color combo, is some sort of blue and green. And if this starts getting messy and you don't like, like I'm starting to just get a mix of those colors because everything is kind of moved together. I do need a little bit more water. You can tell that I needed to add water because do you see how my paper is dry when I'm picking it up? I can still see that there's ink there, but I gotta get it moving. Ooh, I really like that one. I'm gonna hold this on this end because I don't want to put the end of this because I have green or kind of a teal that I'm really liking. So I wanna hold on to that. So do you see how this is more green down there, more teal up top? I'm setting these all aside. I'll show you all of them when I get done. Let me add, you can either wipe this clean or you can add a little bit more. I think I might just add blue right now because I feel like I have can see green and you can go in and add colors. I wouldn't add a ton of those drops, but just a little more ink, a little more water, sorry, a little bit. One tip, I don't know about you, but I do use distilled water in my sprayers. I just don't want the water to get in, to get kind of funky in there. I don't know about you, but I have had my water go bad in those sprayers. If you're not using a filtered water or something. Just filled mine up last night. Ooh, I really like, do you see how I have green up here, but blue going on down here. I really like that, but I'm going to add, I just want to get that one leaf color on there. So we'll set that one aside to dry. They all lighten up as they dry. So keep that in mind. Um, the more water you have, the lighter your color washes. But if you don't have enough water, you end up with that dry and you don't want that either. So there's a happy medium between both of them. So, and this is, like I said, no rhyme or reason, kind of just making a mess. And I'm making a mess of my fingers. Let's get them tapped. I, I like that I have blue down here and green up here. I don't want to lose that. So let me just go over there. I like that. So we'll set that aside. I'm going to bring, I'm going to wipe my fingers first. So I don't transfer it to something else. I'm going to keep this for a sec. I won't get rid of that just yet. But do you see, aren't they pretty? And they're already starting to dry. So this is the first one that I did. And you can see how that wash is already lighting, lightening up. So we can come back to that. We can add more colors to it. But this technique of adding the water to the die cut is how I made this card. So that's why these are a lot lighter. I used the same colors, but they're a lot lighter. And yes, I did splatter. I will come back to that but that's why these are so much lighter than I think these turned out. Um, but it's also about coming back and adding layers and I'll do that in a second. But I also have a bunch of watercolor paper cut off to the side here. So again, this is the 118 watercolor paper that Taylor sells. And this is an, it could just be wiped and gotten rid of if you didn't want to do this, but I usually try to take some, my paper and I will pull that up um, and use this as my first base because like this is a first base and then I dry it and then you start adding layers. So can you see like this one has all the layers and you eventually start getting all the spots? That comes later, but you need to get a first wash down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I don't know, rhyme or reason. This time I put the flat, you know how the watercolor paper, the 118, Watercolor paper has a rough side and a flat side. It is completely up to you which side you want to use. And normally I use the rough side or the bumpy side, the side with all the groove in it. Uh, I did not. I used the, f the more smooth side this time. When I did these, all the die cuts, I used the more rough side, the more textured side. So this is the flat side. Just use it to sop up the color that's there. I think normally, especially if I'm not going to be stamping on it, I will use the more textured side because I like the way the watercolor kind of catches here and there, but it's completely up to you. Um, I don't know why, just then I decided the smooth side for that. But while those are drying a little bit, I'm going to wipe this only because there's just a little bit left on there. I know I could keep sopping it up with paper, 
but sometimes I just like to clean it up so I can get back to having seeing my blue and green separation so we'll wipe that do you know I only have the big version of this Taylor used to sell the big version I'm totally going to buy this because I don't have this this is Taylor's I was using this and it doesn't have the edges I love the bumper edges I don't have to worry I was using it like this at home and I was some of the watercolor was running off and I always had to be really careful that I didn't get it like on my work surface or on a project that was nearby. I really love that this has bumpers. So I'm going to add that to cart later, right? <laughs> uh oh, don't leave me, Melanie. She just got her grab bag in the mail. Oh, she said, oh, I love everything. So maybe you just got it recently, but you got to open it. Ah. Awesome. I'm, I'm jealous because like I said, the grab bags just for me, you guys don't want to see me using retired stuff, especially if someone doesn't have it. So uh, I don't get them. So I kind of, do you remember the advent cal calendar Taylor did it last year? Oh my gosh, I did purchase that because I wasn't around to see what they stuck in them. And I kept telling Taylor, don't tell me, I don't want to know. So it was just kind of a fun surprise every day. That's was my little Christmas. I loved it. So let's put some more. Get back to this here. You don't have to shake it. It is a habit on my part. So just saying you don't have to do that. And you don't have to do lines. You can do little drip drops. You can. Uh, it just happens to be the way I do it. So I'm going to try putting down a little more blue this time to see if that... And this is the lime zest. So you can see how much more green that is, how much more yellow tones are in there. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Again, back to my sprayer. So you can see I'm just starting to see it move. That's all I want. If I do see a spot like right there, there's no water on that part of the line. You do want to make sure you get that. Otherwise, that's when you kind of get more of the spots that just don't want to move for you. So let's, what do I want to do? I might go back to my die cuts. So they're starting to dry. You know what, let's do this. I'm gonna dry them a little bit, everything. So forgive me here. I have just one of those old, I've had this for years. Tim Holtz, heat it. I'm gonna dry everything just a little bit. If you have a heat gun, you can use that. It just gets so hot. I would just really encourage you what I do just let it dry if you can be patient let it dry let it dry overnight whatever well not overnight that would be a lot of days I guess how about I usually just walk away for like an hour you know I go and do dishes or I switch laundry or something and then I come back but this is I can tell how um, easily I can bend the paper that it, they are still wet to the core but they will be okay for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to get some more, I want to get more texture to them. Ooh, I'm gonna stop there. Let's see how that goes. I feel like I put down more color this time, so this might be really good. Let's grab some green over there. I'm going to leave them kind of thick. Last time I kind of let, kind of smooshed them around a little bit more. The second layer is really nice to try to get some of those dots or spots added to it I do leave this in that's kind of a personal preference on that leaf the other ones I pop out but for some reason that one I, I don't know why I'm so I keep leaving it in I haven't taken them out yet this one is my absolute favorite die cut isn't it so pretty I shouldn't play favorites right so get some more on there Again, I'm making my fingers dirty. If you didn't want to, you could either put on gloves or, I don't know, use another pair of tweezers to kind of move it around. I just, I'll go in and scrub my hands really good. We have that soap here that's got the scrubby in it that usually gets it out. Or if I go home and use some of my exfoli exfoliator product in the bathroom, that'll get them off my hands so I might add just a little bit more water I feel like I see color but it's not moving so ooh, that's good Ooh, I'm gonna leave that do you see how I have some dry dots that's where this second layer is fine if you have your mat a little more dry 
because you get more of these concentrated dots that give you like this texture. Do you see this up in here? I love all that texture. I don't know, really love it. You guys are really quiet. Hopefully it's because you're, I don't know, listening, not bored. So I'm gonna come back to this one. This is that piece of paper that I put down one layer. I really wish I had used the more textured side. I just thought I would see, because yesterday when I was messing, I mainly went to the textured side and I thought, oh, I'll just try it. But I have to admit, I really wish I had used the other side. So again, a little bit drier this time with my splotches. And you see how I'm getting some of that, I mean, you use the word texture again, some of that dimension. So, and again, even if I don't end up liking this as a panel itself, it's perfect for die cutting. Okay, so I kind of want to, I'm gonna clean this up. I could, like I said, keep using all those pieces. Just FYI, uh, when I came in to borrow Taylor's, I used some of her stampers mist on here because she had used purple prior. Here, let me do this, I'll show you. I used a little Sampras Mist and I was able to get the purple she had used prior to me borrowing it. So you can clean that up pretty well. There is a little bit that's stuck in there, but I think if you were gonna go on to another color, that would be really important to make extra sure you have. So like she had used purple. If any of that purple came up into my greens, it would have started to look a little muddy. So something to think about, um, but that Stampers Mist cleans it up so well. Okay, so let's go back. I want this to have a little more dimension and layers to it. Look how these are drying. Bring these back in. They pretty. So pretty. Let me dry really quick. Hopefully, I just want to get one more layer on this. But like I said, normally my preference is to let this dry. I mean, it's usually pretty dry within 30 minutes to an hour depending on how much liquid you used. It, you don't need much time. The other thing, I learned this a long time ago, if it feels cold, it's not dry. Like if you feel the paper and it's cold, it's not dry. So this one is not fully dry, but it's okay. We're just, I'm just gonna move on so you don't have to listen to the blow dryer. So I'm gonna do a little more yellow or the lime zest, the yellow tone, and then more blue raspberry. Maybe just a little bit of the pea pod. Kind of looks like a mad face right there. <laughs> Did anyone see that amazing moon last night? I heard all about it this morning. My mother-in-law even texted me and I didn't see my message. So I was kind of disappointed, but it sounded amazing. What I saw on TV looked amazing. People that took pictures with some big super moon last night. Ooh, I love all that texture I'm getting. I'm gonna dry this one more time because I want to use all this, but I want to make sure I have this pretty well dry. So the other thing about letting it air dry is I feel like the water kind of just does something different than when you blow dry or blow dry it, heat it. And you don't wanna burn your paper, so don't use a, um, uh, heat gun. Don't use the gun that you use, the heat tool that you use for embossing. It's just too hot. The new one, I brought this one out. Taylor sells this one now and it has a low setting on it, the new Sizzix. And let me try it. It's, it has a lot more air that comes out of it. It's a lot louder. Um, not a lot, but it seems to work. This one might work if you have this one on the lower setting. So see if this has gotten a little bit more dry underneath here too. So do you see all these spots? When those get kind of dry around them, they make for really good like dimension and texture. Do you see all that? I love it. That's what I'm after. I might just stop and see where that goes. I think it'll be really pretty for Okay, now I'm fussing because I want a little bit in here. So that seems like maybe, maybe a little bit of pea pod. Maybe just a touch of the blue. We'll skip the lime zest this time. Hope I don't regret this. It's a little dark. 
it's all right it'll dry back too so it's just about adding layers deciding where you want a little bit more and a little bit more I did being as I kept going some of that those dry spots that I was getting I have kind of moved them around because I introduced water to them again so then they moved so it's something to think about if you have an area you really like dry it before you move on and add I like that so let me get this out of the way we're done messing I'll bring this back in they pretty we'll use those and I did just because I know when you're die cutting you really want to make sure that your paper is dry dry as can be so do as I um, I am not going to use this one today that's why I brought these with me because they're fully dry I'm going to use one of those today for die cutting um, we can use these but this couple of reasons why I don't like die cutting paper when it feels wet so if it is wet if it's pretty malleable if it's cool to the touch means it's not dry two reasons why you don't want to use paper that's a little bit wet one I find whatever temporary tape I use on a paper that's a little more wet it will pull up the surface um, it just does second reason is the dies cuts are so much better on dry paper if it's a little bit wet I find um, sometimes it just doesn't cut as well so two reasons why I really like my paper to be fully dry before I move on so that's why I brought backup plans right so we'll get this out of the way and then I want to splatter so I have to bring in I don't there is splatter on the counter in here because we've done this before but I have to say that I don't want to be the reason why there's splatter on the counter so I have some paper I'm gonna put up quick I just don't splatter clean it goes everywhere if someone has a trick to it I'm all ears but I always kind of get it all over the place so I'm gonna use this Taylor sells this the Gonzi starry colors I have used this for years I had asked her to bring it in um, long long ago and it's just still my favorite for adding a little texture to add splatters it's my favorite so I have she has a little dropper water bottle dropper this comes in handy for me because I don't have um, a sink close to my stamp room so it's kind of up to you uh, but this is my favorite thing I love having this it seems like such a simple little thing but just have water at my desk for if I am water coloring or if I decide oh I'm just gonna do a little water coloring <clears throat> I can dump this out in a bowl if I need to I love you would think it's the small things right it's the little things I always say <laughs> uh, reading comments as long as you dry each layer the layer before won't move I agree Beth I'm sorry if I didn't make that really clear uh, I agree with Beth as long as you dry each layer your previous layer will not move problem was I was being impatient and I knew it was wet and I was like oh I'm just gonna cover this center and I didn't wait for the others to dry but she is absolutely right as long as you dry each layer your previous layer should not move and that's how this one that I'm gonna use in a minute has so much texture as so I fully waited for each layer to dry and I did use the rough side again you can see that extra I wish I had left to that alone but so I'm gonna show you I just put a couple of drops in there mixed it up with my paintbrush uh, can't remember who it was taught me I think it was Heather or Lori said smaller the paintbrush the smaller the splatter larger the paintbrush the larger the splatters so I live by that rule I'm going to layer these all on here set that down for a second oh and I'll use my dropper again I have two ways of splattering I either hit it on the edge of my finger or I take a block you know what I'm gonna use the block for the white so I don't have to worry about making a mess I'm having to clean that in between here so I splatter a little bit I think this adds a lot of texture a lot of um, just interest to these die cuts I really love it so we'll keep splattering a little bit 
I get mad sometimes. It's like, oh, look at that beautiful splatter. Why did it have to land on just paper? I don't know. I get mad at my splatter sometimes. There we go. Now I'm gonna move these back to my hardboard again. That's why I love the hardboard. It gives me something to corral everything, right? So it can dry too. Plus it's also my little warning of saying, don't touch. Oh, and you know what? I wanna do white, Never mind. Let me put them back. I can do my white while I'm here. I'm living on the edge, right? I might dry them just a smidge. Cause again, I don't want my white and my gold to meld into each other here. Dry that just a smidge. That dries really fast. And this, your palette, you just let it dry. You slide it back in the box and it's ready to go for next time again. So that's all. Let me grab my baby wipe back here. Moving on the edge here a little bit. Clean off my paintbrush. Then I'm gonna do the white splatters. I have the Copic white that Taylor sells. I always think it's funny, this thing. It's fraggle rock hair is the way it, can, it comes, I think. I've barely used mine. Just get a little bit of the color out and then I'm gonna use that dropper. That's such a friend of mine. I would, I do like to water mine down a little bit. So again, that's why the little water dropper is so awesome. Just gonna put one drop, I'll see how it seems quick. I always think I can add more water Seems a little thick. I'm gonna add just a smidge more water. Seemed a little thick, so I'll try again. Okay, this is another way that, this is how I first did splatters, was I would flick off the end of a block. Either way works for me. Everyone has their favorite, the toothbrush, the fan brush. I feel like everyone has their thing, whatever works for you. I just like the extra dimension that it adds. So let me, again, I am so prone to the fact that I don't have a sink near my room. So baby wipes, water bottle dropper, or, or water droplet, water droppers are all my friend in my stamp room. So let me set that aside. I'll set my paintbrush aside to wash. So now those are done. Aren't they pretty? I'll get them out of the mess and they'll be a little bit easier to see. But I love all the drops and the, oops. Sorry, knocked over my dropper and I wanted to, my with my water in it, wanted to make sure I had the lid on. Accident waiting to happen, right? So there you go. I forgot there was one more leaf in that set and I didn't use it. So let me get my mess out of the way. Hopefully I didn't get any on the table. At home I have a box. And that's what, I have a box that I do all my splattering in. Okay, so back to this. I may just show you my die cutting on this one because I don't want to, I don't want to cut this yet. I just, I know what happens, especially with the tape. So I will do some die cutting with this one. I think it's really pretty. And um, I brought my little sidekick, but something I figured out yesterday is if I cut this down, cause this is uh, four, four by four and a quarter by five and a half, I can fit so many more piece dies on here if I don't cut it down to fit through my die cut machine. So I, if you give me just a sec after I lay these out, I might go grab the big die cut machine quick then I don't have to sacrifice paper. Yesterday I was kind of sad that I wasted so much paper because I kept using my mini. I love this little sidekick thing, but not for this project. Get that out of my way. I might use a little bit of tape. And this is where I do love to hold down the tape, but again, um, I guess I still splattered. Look, I still got it places. Unless that was from yesterday. It seems pretty dry. Maybe it was from yesterday. Even if I'm careful, I still seem to put splatter everywhere. Oh, 
Cherry's gonna get her watercolors out again. Now you know, I love it. I think it's, I just looked up really quick. I think it's Julianne said, um, she had bought the, I assume she means the um, waffle flower mat, uh, that and the hard boards. My hard boards, I use for so many things. I really love them. So let's see, I'm trying to see how, cause I think I could get one more big leaf there. Maybe we'll just put that right over there in the corner. I'm trying really hard not to uh, waste a bit. So let me get, I'm gonna grab a die cut machine. out of the way I am going to put the shim in just because this is that thicker watercolor paper and because this is the machine they use in the studio so it gets a whole lot of love right that must have moved on there. I want to move it up just a little bit um, and I just want to make sure those centers get cut it probably doesn't need it but I know yesterday when I cut some paper that was a little bit not dry yet, I did have need the shim, but again, that could have very well been because of the, sorry, I gotta get going the right way. It's kind of tough, kind of tight. So before I put it away, I'm gonna check that everything went through and I'm gonna move a couple of these so that we can use the whole piece. So watercolor paper does, I find, like this was dry from last night and I still tore a little, but I did use a brand new piece of temporary tape, so maybe I should have put it on my hand or something just to detack it a little bit. I think I can get one more of these guys over here. Just make sure my dies aren't touching, right? Okay, and I'll run that through. Let me get the rest of these out of the way. Sorry, that's terrible noise. Trying to get the die cuts off of there. Taylor showed me one time to take the two cutting mats and take the top one and run it right over top of the, the bottom one that has stuff stuck to it. So easy. To get rid of those little pieces that get stuck. So you just take that and scrape it against it. Gets rid of all those little pieces right into the garbage can. Obviously, don't do it over your desk or you got another mess to clean up, right? So again, just be really careful whatever temporary tape you're using. Make sure I always try when I'm taping down to make extra sure that I don't put tape, like use it onto a piece that you know you don't care if it does tear. Wouldn't an old clipboard? Absolutely, Cherry. Absolutely. Would totally work. Uh, the one thing I do like about the hardboards, I don't know what it is, but there, it doesn't, though, kind of stays. Like um, my, especially if you have an old clipboard that's like this brownish color, I don't know what they're made out of, um, that it just, it doesn't go running off. My clipboard that I have at home is plastic, and I'm not really sure what kind you're talking about. But Jamie, I absolutely agree with you. I should have used the Scotch removable tape. You're absolutely right. That's the stuff that I use for die cutting. And it was right there on the machine. So what was I thinking? I'm kind of a creature of habit. This is loose and laying on my desk. So I always reach for it first. So, okay, aren't they pretty? Look how pretty they are. Now, I still would love to see these splattered, but then once I do that, I cannot, I, I'll have to wait for them to dry again. So. I also prepared ahead and I have die cuts already done. Here they are. These were some leftovers, but I have these already done. They're splattered with the white and the gold. And I'll lay them out just so you can see. These are a little bit different. I got a little more um, of the lime zest on these and a, and a lot less of the pea pod. So these are already splattered with white and gold I wanna do these, but I don't want to wait for them to dry. So I'm just gonna pick them up and move them to the side. 
I tried to be prepared with pieces so that we could not have to sit around and wait for things to dry, right? And put those away. And I, the one, I might not go all the way through because we're kind of getting close on time putting this card together. I, the main thing I want to say is with these, with all three of these cards, I use that press and seal technique because I really wanted to showcase my favorite parts of where the splatter landed or where the watercolor was um, on all of these. So I used the whole press and seal thing because I would arrange stuff and then pick it up. So I was gonna talk you through that. The other thing I wanted to say is on this set, besides the white, I didn't do gold on this one. I did splatter a little bit with the blue raspberry. Same idea, I put a drop of water, a drop of the watercolor, liquid watercolor, and then I splattered. So can you see on these, there's a little bit of blue splatters. I like that too. So I didn't do that on the other ones, but it's a fun way to add some color. So let's get this off to the side. I, in anticipation, so that you didn't have to listen to the uh, heat gun, I did do the background of this already. I have this and this. So I have our, this I use the grid background on. Isn't that pretty? And then let me grab my Misty. Get this in here so we can get, I have the foam out obviously. Shove this off to the side. I'm gonna put this in like that. You can put it in the middle wherever you would like. Doesn't really matter. I just am a creature of habit and I have put my stamp in the corner all the time. Sorry, cheating again. Forgot my ink pad. So I, when I do this, especially with backgrounds like this, that it matters, I can do the whole put tape, a little bit of temporary tape on the back of here, lay it on my stamp, close the door. But with these grid ones, man, it is really particular to make extra, extra sure you got it in the right spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay it because if I stamp out that grid, I can see exactly where my lines are, where I want to center so I can center this way and totally get it centered the way I want. So just kind of a picky little thing that I do, but ink this up. But again, you could totally do that trick where you lay your paper over on the stamp and then close the lid. Happens to be for me that this is just, I was like, seriously, I thought I brought my Just Press tool. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. This is the new Tropical Punch color. Tone on tone. There we go. So then it's straight. I, sometimes I find with like this grid, it's kind of big to really get it lined up there, right? And then to tape it over on the side, it works. I do it often, but for this one, this was more foolproof for me. So, all right. So then this is my birthday wishes. I used a different sentiment from that set, that botanical set. Um, I wanted just something different to have in my stash, right? Because so this is a botanical sentiments. I already stamped with Versamark and gold embossing powder to do the sentiment up. Then I kind of fuss. So I'm gonna try not to make this the half hour long process it was yesterday for me. I could sit and fuss and fuss with these die cuts. Um, and that's the reason why I absolutely adore the press and seal because I once I have it the way I want it, I don't want it to move. So I might kind of change my arrangement a little bit because the sentiment is a little bit bigger on this one. I torture you with my fussing, right? This one, I actually remembered to use this one. Don't know why I didn't die cut it on my other set. Let's see, any questions? Awesome. Oh. Cherry, I want my coffee back too. So it's behind me. I need to finish it. 
I'm so bad about the fussing and fussing and fussing with these die cuts. I'm going to try very hard not to make this forever for you. I kind of like that. I can move my sentiment up just a smidge. I love these. Aren't they so pretty? I just love this. The texture, the dimension that splattering gives it. So gold, white, and then again, I didn't show you on camera today, but you can use your liquid watercolor to add again, just slightly, ever so slightly water that down a little bit. I really like how that turned out. So I'm going to keep it. And then I would, I'm going to pick, this is just a piece of press and seal and I've cut it into a smaller, more manageable piece. The biggest thing to, to remember is that like, just go straight down. Don't even think about it. Straight down, straight up. So I'm gonna put that down, press it really well. Um, and then I would use liquid, I'm gonna use liquid to glue this down. If you wanted to pop it up, you could go through the trouble of taping all that. That is what I did for this one, okay? is I went through all, added all the little bits and pieces. Can I show it to you right there? There we go. Dead dimension to that one. Um, cut all the pieces just to pop that up and give it some texture, some dimension, some height. So I think I will still do that because I really like that. Um, I don't know if you want to watch me put that all together, but that's what I did for this one. That's how I made that card. So give that extra dimension. Let me bring the other ones back in. And then I might even just lay, I'm gonna lay these out. Aren't they so pretty? These are the ones that we I finished today. They feel like they're getting dry, still kind of flimsy. So that tells me that it's still really wet. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you pull out your liquid watercolors. They've been around a little while. Um, and I really like seeing what new colors come out of the colors that I chose because the the lime zest and the blue raspberry and the pea pod play really awesome together to make this awesome tropical toned color. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you try it. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Charlie's reminding you about Stamp Joy. I'm teaching, yes. Um, love the technique. Good. I want to make sure there's no questions. Love that background stamp. You don't have it yet. I assume you're talking about the grid. It's meant to go with something else, but I really love it. So awesome. Good. I don't see any. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye.